Hello and welcome to this talk on the Public Access Scheme. My name is Declan O'Dempsey, I'm a barrister at Cloisters Chambers and in this talk I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the Public Access Scheme generally, how it works, but also to show you how you can use it to instruct a barrister directly um, and what you can do to help yourself get the best out of instructing a barrister directly. These tips will, I hope, save you money and will help you to present your case as well as it can be done so that your barrister can help you with good advice or representation. The public access scheme allows you to instruct a barrister directly, whereas in the past you needed to use a third party in order to do this, such as a solicitor. The main advantage of instructing a barrister directly is that it may save you money. You'll only be paying for a barrister and not a barrister and a solicitor. You still may need to assist in doing some things. For example, something I'll touch on later, filing documents with the court. If your barrister is authorised to conduct litigation on your behalf, uh, then the barrister can carry out those sorts of tasks. They're not difficult tasks to do, and your barrister can advise you on how to go about them. So even if your barrister is not licensed to conduct litigation, you can still access their services directly, provided you're able and prepared to carry out the work that a solicitor would normally carry out. It's worth remembering that barristers are bound by a code of conduct. And in some cases, this may mean that your barrister recommends that you instruct a solicitor. This might happen, for example, because of the complexity of the case or because you may need more assistance than the barrister can provide alone. Public access scheme work is available for all types of work that barristers can do, although there may be some restrictions on the work where there is alternative means of funding it available. And your barrister should talk to you about using alternative means of funding your work. Try considering first if it would be better to have a solicitor to help you uh, with your case. The pros are that you can deal with your case with more confidence knowing that the professionals have control of all aspects of it. The cons on the other hand are that instructing a solicitor is an additional expense that you may not think is worth having if you know that you'll be able to do all the things that a solicitor could do. Remember, your barrister can advise you on all of these tasks. Your barrister should be clear with you that he or she won't be able to take the case in certain types of situation. Now, some of these are not obvious immediately. So, for example, it may not be appropriate for a barrister to take a case under the public access scheme because of the emotional nature of the case. That's a situation in which it may be better to have a solicitor and then the barrister can bring a degree of objectivity uh, to the case, which they may not be so able to do if they are having to deal with the highly emotive nature of the subject matter of the case. Here's another example. A barrister may see that your case is particularly complex or may take the view that because of the type of work that needs to be done, you're not going to be able to do it or it will be excessively difficult for you to do it. In these sorts of cases, the barrister should be clear with you as to the reasons uh, for suggesting a solicitor. If your barrister is not permitted to carry out certain types of work, they should be clear with you about this as well. You can always discuss whether your case is suitable for the public access scheme. And you can do this, if you're not sure about whether it is or not, by contacting a barrister or their clerk. You should ask for an initial view. Sometimes this can be provided for free, 
if the barrister thinks that the case would benefit from the involvement of a solicitor, they'll tell you at that stage. But they may tell you that at any stage because they have to keep that issue under review at all stages. In order to help your case along, you're going to have to do certain administrative tasks, remember, that will normally be carried out by a solicitor. You'll have to do these without the help of a legal professional, uh, or of course, your barrister can advise you what you need to do in relation to those tasks. But one of the things you'd need to be able to do is to gather the evidence together, such as the documents which support your case or the ones which touch on your case. You'll need to gather the documents which your barrister will need in order to do the work that you've asked them to do. Now, it's sensible to start thinking about this before looking for a particular barrister and asking them to take the case on through the public access scheme. And the reason for this is that the better presented your case is at that stage, the more chance there is that a barrister will be uh, interested in taking it on. So what can you do to assist yourself in getting a barrister and in making sure that you get your money's worth once you've got your barrister? Well, here are some questions that you could ask yourself. Have you written down your version of events in the order in which they happened? Can you do a timeline or a chronology? It's worth doing this before you get together with the barrister to explain the case to the barrister. That way they can look at it in advance and have a clear idea of what you are uh, concerned about. If you can do this, it will save you time and that probably means it will save you money. If you can't do it or you don't do it, then the barrister has to do this work and they can appropriately charge you for their time in doing this. Have you put the documents you may need to support your case into a chronological order? Now, what I'm about to say may seem obvious. If you can, buy a file from a stationer's, a ring binder or a lever arch file, and think about copying all original documents that you've got, which you think have a bearing on your case. I say copy them because you should not give originals to the barrister you're approaching or who's representing you. They should not accept original documents from you. Once you've got your documents together, uh, you should get a whole bunch and prepare them to put into the file. Now, you want to put them in, in chronological order. Simplest way of doing this, especially if there are a lot of documents, is to break down the overall problem. What's the biggest time period that you're dealing with? Suppose your case runs over a number of years. It would be sensible simply to quickly look at each set of documents and note the year, put them into a pile representing that year. Once you've done that, go through that year and put them into piles representing the months. And then finally, go through each month and put them into date order. Put them all together and you've then got a chronological series of documents. Now that you've got your papers into chronological order, Get hold of some dividers and mark the years or months as appropriate on the dividers. This means that you can make sure that you can see any month by the divider in which the documents fall. This means that you and your barrister will be able to get to the relevant documents much more quickly and therefore that will save the barrister time, it will save you time, it will also help to order your thoughts. It's also a good idea to put any correspondence that's arrived from the court or tribunal in one place. You can put them in date order and give them to your barrister either in a separate file or in a division in the file with the other documents in it. You can also put the correspondence you've had with the other side in the case since the case started 
and put that in one place. Again, put it into chronological order. Now, I mentioned earlier you may need to file documents at the court. This means making sure that the court has received the documents formally within the stipulated time limits. This will cover things like expert reports, uh, formal documents known as case summaries, and documents such as that. Witness statements will have to be received by the court within time scales. They'll need to be filed with the court, in other words. You'll need to be able to correspond with the court and the other parties uh, in the case. Now, if your barrister can conduct litigation, they can do this for you on their headed notepaper. However, even if they are not licensed to conduct litigation, you can ask them to uh, prepare the text that you then send to the court or the other parties. The barrister writes it, you send it out in your name. They have to come to the court or the other side from you. And if you're not sure whether you'll be able to assist the barrister with the various administrative tasks, for whatever reason, then it's worth considering again whether you wouldn't be better off having a solicitor to assist you with your case. I want to say a word or two about uh, your status during all this if your barrister is not licensed to conduct litigation. If you take a legal case and it's going to go to court or is going through a court or tribunal, it's known as a piece of litigation. If your case is a piece of litigation, and if your barrister is not authorised to conduct it on your behalf, then you're considered as a litigant in person. This means someone who's bringing their own case and representing themselves. And you'll be treated by the court and by the other side, for most purposes, as though you were acting without any legal assistance. Your name appears in the court records and all documents from the other parties uh, and the court will be sent directly to you. Sometimes you can ask or arrange for the court or the tribunal uh, and the other parties to copy documents to a third party. Now, in a future talk, I'm going to deal with the ways in which you can set out your story in a chronological order in a way which does not mean that you have to spend hours and hours uh, doing it. Thank you very much.